Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today we are taking a look at another Sig Sauer P365, but this one is chambered for 380 ACP. Sig introduced the 380 version earlier this year. It's the same size as the original P365, so it's got a 3.1 inch barrel. For now, SIG is offering three variants of the 380 model, the vanilla option with standard height iron sights, a manual safety variant, and this one, which has no manual safety, tall iron sights, and comes with the SIG Romeo Zero Elite red dot sight pre-installed. The ammo capacity is the same as the nine millimeter version. You get 10 rounds in the flush fitting mags, which also come with an optional extended finger rest, or you can buy longer 12 round magazines. The 380 version is compatible with the fire control group and the grip modules from the nine millimeter P365s. So that means you can mix and match uppers and lowers like we did here. We stuck the 380 slide onto the Wilson combat grip module that we have for the nine millimeter XL. It works great with the 12 round mags. You can even buy just a 380 barrel from SIG's website, but the product page cautions that it is not compatible with the nine millimeter slide. The 380 slide is about a 10th of an inch shorter and slightly narrower. Unfortunately, SIG does not sell a standalone 380 slide yet. Until they do, it's not possible to convert your nine millimeter to a 380 without buying a complete 380 pistol. It might be tempting to compare this gun to the Ruger LCP Max. That's the 380 double stack version of the LCP. It also has a 10 plus one capacity, but the LCP Max is basically the same size as the original LCP, except for the width. It's a pocket pistol, and it has the kind of harsh recoil you get from any other pocket 380. It's not the most pleasant gun to shoot. A lot of you guys know I've been saying for a long time that 380 ACP shines brightest not in pocket pistols, but in guns just slightly larger than that. When you move from an LCP up to something, let's say the size of a Glock 42, 380 can be a real pleasure to shoot. The P365 is virtually the same height and length as the Glock 42. The grip is about a 10th of an inch wider. In nine millimeter, the original P365 is a handful. It's not horrible to shoot for 50 or 100 rounds, but it is objectively a snappy gun. Now I prefer the XL version of the P365 in nine millimeter because it's easier to control. The extra couple of ounces from the longer slide and barrel cut down on the recoil a bit. The longer grip gives me a little more to hang on to, but even with the XL grip frame, the challenge a lot of shooters run into, including myself, is that there's just not quite enough room for the support hand to get in there and exert the kind of pressure that we really want. Because of the tight frame dimensions, I really have to practice with this specific gun fairly regularly in order to be able to shoot it as well as I would like. The 380 version completely changes the equation. This gun is smaller and lighter than the XL that I have shot thousands of rounds through. It does not have any kind of special uh, grip frame or aftermarket texture, but the first time I took it out to the range, I equaled or improved on my best performance with the nine millimeter XL on half a dozen different drills. The gun is so soft shooting that the crowded grip doesn't really matter. You don't have to get a death grip on it to keep that dot on target. Of course, this is an advantage for newer shooters or anyone with grip strength or mobility issues. It's also an advantage for everyone else. It doesn't matter how well you can run the nine millimeter P365, you will either shoot the 380 version better or your performance will be about the same, but with a lot less effort and practice. And look, I know that nine millimeter is ballistically superior to 380 ACP. There's no getting around that. We could debate how much better or how often that really matters in the real world. I don't think we'll ever have a definitive answer. What's not debatable is that I can shoot the 380 version of this gun better. My performance is more consistent. I throw fewer shots off target. It's just more forgiving when I'm not 100% tuned in to all the correct shooting mechanics. But before I get too enthusiastic about this gun, I have to consider some issues that I've run into with other recoil operated 380s in this larger than pocket size category. 
In the past, I've been quick to recommend the Glock 42 and the Smith & Wesson EZ380. Like the P365 380, they're easy to shoot, and for me, they've been very reliable. However, after watching other people shoot these guns and hearing from other shooters, I've realized they are not quite so reliable for everyone. Some shooters, typically inexperienced shooters, oftentimes have trouble getting those 380s to cycle reliably. And from poking around online a little bit, it looks like the same might be true of the P365 380. We can get some clues as to why this is by watching the ejection pattern of the brass. The shells make kind of a gentle arc and they land a couple of feet away. Compare that to the 9mm XL where they fly out with some real authority. That tells me that it might not take a whole lot to keep that 380 slide from cycling completely. So. I tried shooting the gun with a really loose grip. I tried holding it lower down on the frame and sure enough, I started getting stove pipes right away. I tried the same thing with the nine millimeter XL and the gun did not malfunction. In fact, I could hold the very bottom of the grip with minimal pressure and it still cycled normally. With the 380, if you have a suboptimal grip or some recoil anticipation issues that cause you to maybe move the gun as you press the trigger, you can prevent the gun from cycling. This is sometimes called limp wristing, although that's not an accurate description of what's actually happening most of the time. It can happen with any recoil operated semi-auto, but the larger than pocket size 380s seem to be extra susceptible to it. When I use a normal firing grip, this gun cycles just fine. Just be sure to get the web of your hand as high up on the back strap as possible and squeeze it with no less than the pressure of a firm handshake. Now I know some people have had cycling issues with this gun even with a good grip. Uh, it seems like some of these have a break-in period where they can be a little temperamental for the first couple hundred rounds or so, and then they run fine. Uh, the magazines might be a part of the problem here. The P365 mag springs are extremely tight. That goes for the 380 version as well as the nine millimeter. I've seen fresh mags cause issues before they break in. If you leave them fully loaded for a couple of days or load and unload them a few times, they tend to loosen up a bit. Ammo could also be a factor. If you can't get it to cycle with one load, try a couple other loads. We had two stove pipes early on with 95 grain blazer brass, but then we switched over to 90 grain PMC and it was fine for about 400 rounds until I tried that experiment with the weak grip. One feature I really like about this specific version of the P365 is the way they have set up the sights, except for the 380s and a couple of newer variants of the nine millimeter, mounting a red dot on a P365 meant that you lost the rear iron sight. On this version, not only has the optic been moved forward, so you get to keep your rear sight, you also get extra tall sights that co-witness with the red dot. The standard 380 model does come with the same optic cut in the slide, so you could add an optic of your choice and install the tall sights, which SIG has on their web store for 100 bucks. Depending on the optic, that's gonna cost you no less than $200 total possibly a lot more. The MSRP for the 380 with the SIG Optic is $750 versus 600 for the non-optic variants. That seems like a pretty good deal for an extra 150, but only if the SIG Romeo Zero Elite Optic is any good. In my experience with it so far, it's an okay optic. The reticle has a 32 MOA circle with a three MOA dot, but you can change that to a circle only or a dot only. I personally prefer the dot without the circle. The brightness is adjustable and I found it to be plenty bright enough for shooting outside on a sunny day. As far as using it at the range, I don't have any complaints. Now SIG claims up to 20,000 hours of runtime on a single battery with this optic. That's a little over two years. Three months after I bought the gun, I got it out of the safe one day and the battery was dead. Now, that's the battery that came with the gun so I have no idea how long it had been in there. Uh, I removed the optic, put in a new battery, but the optic wouldn't turn on after I reinstalled it. Like a lot of these smaller optics, the battery fits in the bottom without any cover or door. It's just held in place by the top of the slide. I had to shim the battery with a few pieces of tape in order to get it to make enough contact for the optic to turn on. I've had the same issue with some other pistol red dots. I think it's a 
pretty major design flaw, but it is fairly easy to fix. So just watch out for that if you buy one of these. The P365 380 has its own magazines. The body is essentially the same as the nine millimeter, but the follower is different and the floor plate has a spacer that runs up through the spine of the mag. The nine millimeter magazines will work with the 380 kind of, I'm not recommending it, especially for carry, but if you already have a big stash of the nine millimeter mags, that might be useful for practice with the 380. So would I carry the P365 380? I've carried the nine millimeter XL on and off for the last two and a half years. The 380 is easier to carry. It's easier to shoot and has excellent backup iron sights. I would love to start carrying this gun today, but I'm a little reluctant. I've only got about 500 rounds through it so far. It's run fine under normal circumstances, but I'm a little troubled by just how easy it was to make it malfunction. I would like to shoot it a lot more, uh, try several more types of ammo, maybe have a few other people shoot it. I don't wanna promise anything, but if you guys are interested, I will try to bring this gun back for a long-term review sometime down the road. Just let me know what you think. In the meantime, I hope you found some of that useful. If not, here is one more important life tip you can use. Wait until after you get out of the shower to clip your nails. They'll be easier to cut and the clippings won't fly all over the room. If you wanna play with rapid moving projectiles, save that for the shooting range and be sure to buy that ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.